for joining me. I'm Scott, and I have a crack in my thumb. This thumb guitar is from 1986, made by Tarada Music Japan. It's the Birdland model. Notice how they spell Birdland. Kind of cool. Model number GW200. Inspected by someone with cursive writing. Handwriting. Cursive signature. Tarada Music Instrument Company. And by the way, you'd notice by the, the shape of the headstock and the pickguard and all that, this is a Gallagher copy. Gallagher is a musical company here in, in uh, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. They used to be in a place called Wartrace, Tennessee. But um, they went down to Murfreesboro now, and they probably still make this uh, the model that this is copied after. Yeah, things are starting to get a little crazy here. This is a 5,007-inch feeler gauge, and that's, that's pretty crazy that I can get that in there. Wow. Wow. Okay. And it's kind of weird, too, that like this guitar does not need a neck reset. The action's low. And the glue joint is fine down in here, but it's it's definitely just cracked up. I think what I'll do is uh, put some more string tension on it to open this crack up a skosh more. And then um, I'll loosen the strings and put a, get some clamps on it. And... So this is what the test run looks like. I'll uh, I'll warm the area with the heat with the hair dryer, and then I'll loosen the strings real, real quick with this. I'll place these two string holders retainers in place. I'll put the uh, 16 inch radius sanding block or whatever kind of block this is here with a piece of steel in between, and clamp that one bar clamp down. So there's the glue up. Let's uh. We'll take it apart, take this off, and string it up to like F, F sharp, the entire guitar. We'll get it real sharp and put a lot of tension on this, uh, on this joint. So here's the hide glue setup. This is hot hide glue in um, it's um, the Lee Valley heater. I'm going to use this uh, syringe with a number 19 needle. I've got a feeler gauge over here and some warm water. Yeah, this baby bottle warmer is what I use. And this is an actual baby bottle. I just cut it and it keeps all this Keeps, gets me some nice warm water to keep everything in, including the feeler gauge. So let that warm up. This is already hot. So it's still heating over there. I've got it tuned to F sharp. The entire guitar it's tuned up real sharp. And it's put a lot of extra pressure here. And it's opening up this joint. More so on this side than on this side. It's a little tighter here. It's looser over here. I actually don't even need the syringe, but what I do need is this little cup. I'm going to dip the brush in the glue and hold the brush with this cup underneath it so I don't get glue on the floor. Then I'll take the feeler gauge and get it down in there. And maybe just kind of push it in with my finger or my thumb. I use my thumb because this is a thumb guitar. 
he uses his thumb on the thumb. Oh my god. fast because I forgot to use a hairdryer. Gotta work fast. It's a cold day in Nashville. We've got a little glue squeezing. Put a little more pressure on that clamp. And believe it or not, that teeny tiny little bit of glue should be enough to hold this baby for life. Get that paper towel again. A little bit more of the warm water. I'll just clean that off. We'll let it set for about four hours, come back and see what's going on. So now that uh, I've got it, my color back on here, I need to clean off the surrounding area so that my lacquer or poly or shellac or whatever I decide to do it doesn't trap this layer of dirt underneath it causing witness lines and adhesion problems so I've got naphtha naphtha in a gray scotch bright pad I'm avoiding the colored area I might hit it lightly but I don't need to because it's already been sanded back to nothing and it's totally clean but this uh, loosens up the dirt and then I can take a clean paper towel and wipe, see if any dirt comes up on the paper towel. A little bit. So I'm going to rub it with the cotton balls next. And the cotton ball, I'll moisten it with naphtha. Just rub a dub dub like three men in a tub. Rub. A dub. Then I think I will use the white bond of poly. Or should I spray? Should I spray satin? Everything else is pretty glossy. I decided since I'm working on the Alvarez project side by side with this one, and it's in the wipe on, wipe on poly stage, I will do wipe on poly. I take a little bit on the paper towel. I can get into the corner pretty nicely with this. I'm going to do both sides. Feather out the edges with the dry side of the paper towel. And come back in an hour and a half, two hours. And in between coats, I use the gray scotch bright pad. You need to use an abrasive pad in between coats for adhesion. And I'll just hang the guitar back up on the wall for an hour and a half and work on another project. And we'll get the two uh, guitars back down and 
continue to wipe. So I ended up doing six coats of the wipe on poly yesterday. And today, I think it looks so good. I think what I'll do is I'll take some of the Trizac 3000 and a little bit of simple green soapy water for you that for y'all that don't know about simple green cleaner household cleaner and I'll uh, just get a little wet sand wet sand action so you can soapy I want to do that transition area here I stopped right about here with the wiping so I want to go across that little line and do this side too even though I'll never look at this side I'll still give it the same treatment I could go with 12,000, 1,500, I mean 1,200, 1,500, and 2,000 before the Trizac 3,000. But this turned out so smooth, I just want to see if I can get away with the Trizac and a little bit of polishing compound. It probably looks better now than it will after I polish it. Ultra Cut Compound 105. Take a little bit of that on this pad. I'm going to give her a little rub down. Boy. This is Viva. Always polish with a Viva. You have to spend money to make money. And when I polish a guitar, I use only the best. Viva is the best. What do you think, guys? Think she passes the test? It's just an old guitar from the 80s. But I think it's ready to rock and roll. Before I bring the strings back to tension, I thought I'd look at what a weird little design that this guitar has. Um, all of the bracing in this guitar is X-braced. It has two finger braces, two tone bars, two finger braces on both sides I meant to say. Everything about it is like a traditional Martin, except this neck block is round. Sometimes they have this foot up there, that's, that's under the extension, the fingerboard extension. That's a mirror down here. But anyways, this, uh, that piece of wood there usually indicates that the truss rod extends out into this area a little bit, and it's kind of hidden by that uh, block. But it also looks like it, they put a little bit of a finish on there, like a little wipe of shellac or something. Which is weird because all the other internal parts look like they're unfinished. And here's the, a look at the very first bridge replacement that I did. This is probably back in the early 2000s. And I chipped out a lot of the finish and stuff around the edges that I've since I've come back and kind of brushed in a little bit of lacquer and stuff. but. Uh, these are 
I, I probably mentioned it, that these are solid ebony pins, and it really improved the sound of the guitar, because it had like a softwood bridge that was painted black from the factory, make it look like um, ebony, but it wasn't ebony. It was like pine or something silly. sticking around. I hope if you have a big old crack in your guitar you get it fixed, surgically or non-surgically. Whatever tickles your pickle. But yeah, this one got fixed.